can. So then finally, the, the COVID question. Um, so here's, I think, the, the most important thing with the data. If you are vaccinated, fully vaccinated, the chance of you getting seriously ill or dying from COVID is effectively zero. If you look at the people that are being admitted to hospitals, uh, over 95% of them are either not fully vaccinated or not vaccinated at all. And so these vaccines are saving lives. They are reducing mortality. Mortality in nursing homes since we rolled out the vaccines in December is down over 95% due to COVID. Mortality for elderly people since we rolled out the vaccines is down nearly 90%. And so we're proud in Florida that we put seniors first on that because they were the most vulnerable. We have 85% of our seniors that are vaccinated and about 75% of folks over the age of 50. We have no mandate. We've provided information to people um, and, and we've uh, been very honest about any data that, that comes out. And I can tell you that if you look, uh, you are seeing people that are vaccinated. For whatever reason, some I think can test positive if you're vaccinated, but they don't get seriously ill in, except maybe rare instances. There's always one-offs on stuff. But I can tell you in Florida, your chance of surviving if you're vaccinated is close to 100%. And so we've worked very hard to get those vaccines into all our elderly communities and give it to other folks um, who, who could use it. Obviously, when you talk about some of the younger folks, the uptake has been less. I think that the distribution uh, w was very effective that we did. And I think we had a lot of good uptake on the Johnson & Johnson in March and into April we have saw a noticeable decline in J&J &J when they pulled it back because of the FDA. I think it was a huge mistake. I said so at the time. And I think that that sent a message that maybe this is not something that, uh, that they should be doing. I think that's been unfortunate because I took it. I think it's, I think it's effective. But, but that is what we're seeing. So, yes, and I said this a couple months ago. I said, told people to get vaccinated because we have a summer season here, just like last year. It started a little later this year. So you're going to have higher prevalence for the rest of July, probably into August. And then it goes back and goes the different waves. If you're vaccinated, those waves are not going to impact you in any significant way. And I think that's the important message for people. I get a little bit frustrated when I see some of these jurisdictions saying, even if you're healthy and vaccinated, you must wear a mask because we're seeing increased cases. Understand what that message is sending to people who aren't vaccinated. It's telling them that the vaccines don't work. I think that's the worst message you can send to people um, at this time because I think that the data has been really, really good in terms of preserving people, uh, saving people's lives, reducing mortality dramatically. And I, I can tell you that it, you're going to end up having over 95% of folks that end up seriously ill from this point on are going to be people who are not vaccinated. And so that's the single most important thing. That, that people can understand. And I understand the, the folks who, when we first rolled this out, oh my gosh, it was like the new iPhone times 10. I mean, I'm going down to nursing homes. I would go to senior communities. They were so happy, these seniors. There was not a demand problem. It was a supply problem. And as we got more and more, we did millions and millions of seniors. And we're really proud of that. As you got into the general public, particularly under 50, the, the interest in it was obviously not as intense. And so We've done a lot of people. We've done um, millions of people who are under 50 as well. But you're in a situation now where a lot of the folks who are not taking it, it's accessible to everyone, it, they have different reasons for why they don't take it. And I think that the more they're hectored by government officials or some of these folks, that is not going to get them to yes. I can tell you that right now. I think, I think these are folks that, that have skepticism of authorities. Uh, I think they have different reasons why they may not do it. I don't think most of them think COVID is a hoax or anything. I think that they understand. Some of them are very young and healthy, and they're making the calculation that, that they'll likely be able to handle it, and I understand that too. But as you're trying to reach some of these folks, I think it's important to just be honest with them about, about the risks of, of COVID. If, there are, if they are in a less risky category, you should just be honest with that and not try to scare people into taking it, which a lot of these authorities have done. They see that, and I think that they're, they're very keen on that. So what my view has always been is these vaccines, and you can look at the EUAs, there are occasionally some side effects. But if you're 70 years old, man, the benefit is so much better than, than worrying, worrying about some of that. It's not even close. You know, as you, as you get talking about young kids, 
parents going to look at that and maybe make a little bit different calculation, and that is fine, but just understand where we're at, understand the, the benefits, particularly folks who may have health conditions or who are a little older, uh, and I can tell you the data has been very strong. If the data wasn't strong, then we would have to acknowledge that to people, and I would be the first to want to do it, but the data has been really strong when you have these upticks, uh, it's affecting for things beyond cases, it's affecting in a clinical way people almost entirely who are unvaccinated. I also am not, I've never been driven by the case counts because you have people who may test positive now, we know who, who are vaccinated. And so they'll be positive, but they're almost entirely not gonna get a serious illness. And so to me, it's about preventing the illness, not a positive test. You know, in the clinical trials, when they did it in, in Pfizer and Moderna, it was 95%, both of them I think were 95% effective at preventing a subsequent infection. But notice how they defined a case in those clinical trials. They defined the case to be either a positive test and a symptom, or I think in Moderna said if you had two identifiable symptoms, that could be a case. Neither of them said just a positive test with no symptoms counted as a case. And so some people are saying, well, they said 95%, you wouldn't get, quote, infected. But the folks, some of the folks that have tested positive literally just have a positive test and don't have any symptoms. And so for me, you know, I'm, I'm interested in, in the clinical outcomes here. And I think that viewing it as, are you symptomatic? Are you going to be a hospital admission? Are you going to be in intensive care? Obviously, is your life going to be threatened? I mean, those are the key things. And, and these vaccines make it so that your chance of survival is pretty doggone close to 100%. And so I think that that's the best message we can provide for people. All right, I'll be back soon. Thanks, guys.